2016 meeting. Thank you all for being here. Roll call, please. Wayne Moore. I'm sorry, Wayne Bowen. Here. Victor Gunn. Here. Mark Manzotti. Here. Shelly Moore. Here. Harry Rediger. Here. Loretta Snyder. Here. Joseph Azura. Here. Council, we need to adopt the agenda if I can have a motion. So moved. So moved by Snyder. Second. And seconded by Azura. Any discussion? Those in favor, aye. Aye. Those opposed? Uh, presentations. Uh, Council, on your agenda, you have a um, proclamation for Girl Scout Week. I uh, did a uh, photo with between 10 and 15 Girl Scouts uh, at 345. They're usually in every year, want to come in early. And also, some parents and some scout leaders. It would be a pleasure to recognize Girl Scout Week uh, before we had our, uh, our uh, public meeting for the police station. Um, souls for Souls. Anyone here for Souls for Souls? We uh, have before had quite a few people here. This thing's come, come around almost every month. <laughs> They've done a lot of work um, through the uh, through the years since 2006. Over 21 million pairs of shoes uh, shipped to over 127 countries in the, and to all 50 states. Um, so a lot of work that's done under the leadership of, uh, of Sand or the Lutheran Church, and Marcy's Planet Shoes, Baptist Student Center, and, then, and Southeast University, uh, Missouri State University. Um, so we recognize that, uh, again, in the Souls for Souls Week, um, this week, uh, or this month, at the end of the month, uh, March 27th through April 3rd, you know, I see the the trailer out there uh, along Kings Highway, and uh, they fill it up every year. So uh, recognize them for the work that they, they do. Infectious disease overview, and I think I see Jane back in the uh, back. Jane Wormsman, if you could come forward, please. Thank you for being here. Thank you to the council for having us come, or having me come tonight. Um, I laid a packet about the presentation on uh, your uh, seats there, so you can have that to refer to. You also have a, a brief PowerPoint, so I may go through those slides rather hurriedly, but you do have the presentation in front of you. Also have some handouts back here on the media table that everyone is welcome to take back with you to your place of business or work or whatever and distribute those out to the public. Before I get into the presentation, I would just like to say another thank you and recognition uh, that's overdue. I wanted to thank Julia Thompson and the uh, Parks and Rec Department, the Cape Fire Department, and Police Departments for <coughs> assisting us and the Humane Society with the animal emergency shelter that we had to open uh, during the flooding episode between December and January. Uh, our long relationship with the city and the use of city facilities has just been fabulous. Um, you, you don't know how tremendous that is when we're hit with a disaster to have those resources to use. We did have an animal shelter at the 4-H building. We were open for about 11 days and housed 43 animals. So thank you to all the departments that helped with that. To give you just a little bit of a history, we um, have in Cape Girardeau, a infectious disease task force. And this is a group made up of medical providers, the hospitals, uh, the university, schools, businesses, both the fire and police departments, and even some businesses are, are participating in that. We try to convene at least annually to discuss if there are any new and emerging infectious diseases. Sometimes there are, sometimes there aren't. We've been meeting since about 2007, which was prior to the big H1N1 flu uh, episode that we had. So over the years, we have dealt with the H1N1 episode, the pandemic influenza, uh, last year with Ebola, and now on the horizon we have the Zika virus. So a lot of great minds. We're very fortunate in this community to have that task force. We have four infectious disease doctors in our community. 
So we have a lot of expertise out there to help guide us along. And we just felt it was appropriate uh, to share with the council some of the information about the Zika virus. You as policymakers are critical in helping aid us to respond to, to disasters and our ability to uh, do some preventive work. So, Zika virus. Just a little bit of history on it. It was first discovered, if you want to use that term, in 1947 in Uganda. Has kind of laid below the, the radar since then. There was an outbreak in the Polynesian Islands in 2013, and as, as many of you know, a recent outbreak in Brazil is what has kind of brought this to the forefront. Zika is transmitted to people through the bite of a mosquito, the uh, Aegypti, and it started out in the tropical regions. Um, this is the same mosquito that transmits uh, yellow fever, chikungunya, and dengue fever. It has recently also been uh, identified that it can be spread through sexual contact, and CDC does recognize that it does have the potential uh, to spread not only through the mosquito bites, but also possibly blood transfusions and from the unborn, to the, from the mother to the unborn fetus. Just some pictures of what those lovely mosquitoes look like. The one on the left is the culprit with the, the yellow <coughs> mosquito. The one on the right is an Asian tiger mosquito, which is what we see predominantly in our area around here. And not all mosquitoes are alike. Some are different. The one that's, that's responsible for the Zika virus has its biting habits during the daytime. The one that we commonly see, which causes West Nile, also transmits encephalitis and uh, heartworm parasites to dogs, has a biting time of dusk to dawn. So a little bit different cycle on their biting times. I'm sure if you can tell from that map, um, <coughs> the left hand side are where they're seeing the yellow fever mosquito, the one that is causing the Zika virus, mainly in the southeastern part of the United States. And again, in the Asian tiger mosquito, we start to see creeping up the Midwest, and it is, it is in Missouri. This is what Zika looks like worldwide, where it's predominantly occurring. South and Central America, in the dark purple colors there. And just a listing of all those countries where they have actual uh, cases of Zika that are from mosquito to human. The next map shows the states within the United States that actually have cases recorded of Zika. Now, these are not mosquito-borne transmission. These are travel transmission. These folks have been outside of the country, were bitten by a mosquito in another country, have come back and were diagnosed in the United States. The majority of those, I think 42, are in Florida. Uh, this map was printed or was updated by CDC March 2nd on March 4th, which was last Friday, we did receive notification that we do have one case in the state of Missouri, not from Cape Girardeau County. So. Um, just as a bit of information, there is a, a network between the local health departments, the state, and CDC that if we had someone that we were considering testing for Zika virus, we as a local public health agency would be notified and of course would be informed if that ever came back positive. But there are no cases in Cape Girardeau, not even any under suspicion. The Zika virus itself uh, has an incubation period of a few days. Up to 80% of those infected may or may not show symptoms, or if they have symptoms, they may be very mild. The symptoms that an individual might have are fever, skin rashes, eye infections, muscle and joint pain resembles a lot of other things that we might see, especially in the, the fall, it kind of resembles the flu. Um, those symptoms are usually mild and last about two to seven days. There is no uh, treatment as far as specific treatment for Zika virus. There is no vaccine against Zika virus. Usually folks who become ill with the Zika virus, it's recommended that they get plenty of rest, drink fluids, and treat the pain and fever with the common over-the-counter medications. If symptoms would get worse, of course, they would probably need to seek medical care with their private provider. 
the, the greatest risk appears to be if the individual is pregnant or thinking about becoming pregnant and they become infected. The uh, end result is that infants born of these infected women, they have seen an increased uh, occurrence of microcephaly, which is the uh, small head, small brain development, which can go on to lead to developmental delays, developmental disabilities on throughout the rest of their lives. lives. So again, no local mosquito-borne Zika virus disease cases in the U.S. They're all travel associated, 153, and that was, I guess we could bump that up to 154 now that we have one in Missouri. Um, so now that we've kind of looked at what Zika is, how it's transmitted, what can we as public health, what can we as a community do to prevent it, one of the biggest concerns or biggest areas that we can do is continue mosquito control, uh, recommend the in, uh, use of insect repellent. I have another handout back here which kind of gives you a list of different insect repellents that are recommended. Know your travel risks. Uh, we, we at the health department give advice a lot on uh, for individuals who may be traveling outside of the country, what immunizations do they need, what parts of a country are you going to, are there any health risks in that area. Uh, so, so know where you're going and know what travel risks are there. If an individual, a female, is, is going to be traveling out to one of these areas, consider postponing pregnancy or not going at all until um, after maybe we have a control on this. If pregnant, uh, of course, use uh, insect repellent and avoid mosquito bites when possible. So, in summary, um, the Zika virus again is caused or transmitted by the mosquitoes, usually uh, mild symptoms, usually no specific treatment for that or vaccine currently available. The best protection is to avoid areas where the Zika virus is occurring or being transmitted by those mosquitoes, uh, and then preventing yourself or using uh, protection against mosquito bites. And what should the community do? Well, we would encourage mosquito control efforts at both city and county levels. Uh, educate the, the medical community. We have a, a system at the health center, and most of your local public health agencies do, where when we receive a health alert, such as when the information first came out about Zika, we, it's, it's called our broadcast fax or broadcast email. We rapidly send it out there to all medical providers in the community so that they have the most recent information that we have. Uh, if an individual is suspected of having Zika, then we do have uh, a hotline, more or less, uh, directly to CDC where medical providers can consult with uh, the experts there as far as how to handle any kind of treatment or, or medical care. Uh, and educating the public, which is another role that we do and why we're here, is, is to get that information out. We're working with uh, Nicolette and Jessica. They have a PIO Association, Public Information Officers Association, and they are currently helping us with getting messaging uh, together and what ways can we get that out there? Uh, television, radio, newspaper, Facebook. So um, that's those are some of our um, biggest concerns is getting that information out. That is a very quick overview of Zika, uh, but wanted to share that information with you. And are there any questions? Council, the biggest threat to. Uh the Zika virus is a, a bigger threat in this area than the West Nile. From my understanding, it's, it's the mosquitoes that we have, the, uh, the type of mosquito that we have, the yellow fever mosquito or the Egypti, is not predominantly found here. I don't know that they've identified that there are any here at all. However, I have read some things that say, you know, with travel coming back, could a mosquito survive a trip back to the United States and we bring in that mosquito population here? So. But we do have cases of West Nile. We do have cases of West Nile, right. And so that's why we would also recommend to go ahead and continue to do mosquito control, mosquito abatement, using insect repellent. Um, the poster back there 
shows different ways around your home that you can prevent mosquito breeding, uh, avoid cooling water around an area. Um, so yes, we're probably as, as concerned with the transmission of, of that as we are with Zika. Anyone else? Jane, thank you. All right. Thank, thank you. you for all you do. Well, we the leader department. We, we do do uh, uh, mosquito control. We have uh, used to, we had the, the mister that went around. Um, that's proven not effective, so we have uh, we now use that and control at the standing water, and so we spray standing water around and make that available. You know, if, if people will report it. So that's um, another thing that the, if you see standing water, uh, let public works know, and they they can spray it if they haven't already got it on their list. But uh, that's proven to be given a larva stage and, and spray. So that's a very good uh, part of that. Okay. Communications. Um, I would comment on uh, several uh, council and staff attended the Old Town Cape annual dinner, uh, February 25th. Uh, full room at the event center at Ah. Um, Scott commented and I observed that five six years ago we were at the dock with about 40, 50 people with the uh, little setups in the aisle and, and it was it had energy but it and enthusiasm but it was still a small group and now it's upward of 300 and we've accomplished so much and the facility we had that wasn't even in our thoughts at that point in time. So congratulations to Old Town Cape and everyone that uh, that worked so hard in the downtown area to uh, to enhance our, our old town cave area. It is recognized. Uh, I uh, attended along with Councilman Lanzati uh, the, the Little Mermaid Junior High uh, musical uh, Saturday evening and we issued a proclamation and to my duty and, and Mark gave the uh, coin to the city and I, Mark I'll let you expand on that a little bit. Well as always uh, for those of you who are not aware, Mike Jimmy is a junior high uh, choir director. And for the last 25 years, Mr. Jimmy has been performing musicals at the uh, Central Junior High. His first musical, he had almost 50 kids in it. This musical had in excess of 130 kids participating in it. Uh, high energy, amazing what those 13-year-olds uh, can pull off especially in light of some of the things that 13 year olds don't pull off or do. It's just stunning to me what he gets out of those kids. He certainly has shared his gift with the community for 25 years. In excess of 3,000 students there, and I had great pleasure in being able to present that uh, award, the proclamation, the coin. Uh, for the first time in his life, his wife shared with us that he was actually so, he, he, was official. he admitted it, <coughs> his wife admitted it, and it was really neat to see somebody in their element with an entire room, an auditorium full of folks who were appreciative of what he had done. Uh, a recipient who didn't realize, I think, the impact he's made. And to watch that and watch the, per the, re the receiving line he had to deal with after the, the final night was really cool. The mayor and I stepped back and watched a line formed down one of the aisles that was probably 50 to 65 feet long of people who had come that night and wanted to say something to him, including, and I thought it was cool, his first mermaid, which was his first show was The Little Mermaid. He always saved The Little Mermaid to be his last show. So his first mermaid was there. Was there. Yeah, yeah. Like that Very exciting. There's so many, uh, so many individuals, in the, each in their own way, that make, have a part in our community making us uh, the community uh, that we are, the great city that we are. And, so and it's great you know what, Mayor, I would, I would take the opportunity to, 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 that was something that was sort of on our radar because of Mike's effort and commitment to, to, to this church. And my, my children have actually either been students who have participated in it and or are around that event, but I would encourage other council members to, to identify those individuals in the community and, and make a little effort. Staff, fantastic job writing the proclamation, Bruce, whoever helped you. If, if, if 
that was held. You know, it was really well done. Staff created a very nice proclamation and plaque for presentation. And, and, and it takes, though, initiative from us on the council to try to do that. And sometimes that gets lost. Uh, but the reward of doing it that night was profound. And that reward uh, can, can be had in other places as well. Okay. Thank you, Mark. Uh, I'd like uh, Chief Blair to comment on last uh, Saturday's citizen police experience. This, uh, last Saturday we held our second uh, citizen's police experience and uh, our very own development director, uh, Alex, uh, went through that. I, I tried to recruit him after the event, but he, uh, he said he'd go ahead and keep working for Molly. <laughs> uh, job. But he did, a, he did an exceptional job. He held his own with uh, one of our bigger officers in a little wrestling match. And, <laughs> I think he only got shot a couple of times before the event, but uh, yeah. five, couple of five, who's counting? Uh, but the event itself was pretty good. We had 18 participants, um, and each one of them had very glowing remarks, and so that it really raised their awareness for what police officers actually encounter in the city of Cape Girardeau. So I uh, even had one of our local prosecutors at the end comment that every prosecutor should have to, have to do this to get a job. So. Uh, very successful event. Thank you for uh, the effort on the uh, you and your department. Extra effort, but well worth it. And we thank uh, all of them for their their extra effort. Other uh, council. Continuing the theme of public safety, the I want to uh, thank city manager's office and police chief, uh, as well as the uh, uh, Dadnock HRR CID for the partnership they've established to increase foot patrols and bicycle patrols in downtown Cape. That's going to be a wonderful addition. With the growing number of visitors we have to our downtown, I think that's going to make increase the sense and the reality of safety, and, uh, and definitely a great partnership uh, between the city and, and Old Town Cape. Yeah, thank you, Wendy. Uh, and what else? Yes, I would like to talk about the uh, SNAP group and stop needless acts of violence. Uh, please. And these are mothers that, as five mothers that lost their. Our uh, son uh, during the last two thousand and uh, fourteen to the other, you know, this past fifteen. They had a meeting the other night at uh, Salvation Army. There was about sixty plus people there, uh, community people. Then we had representation from the city manager and the police department, and uh, it was a good meeting, very good, very good. A lot of feedback, a lot of uh, encouragement. So we're going to do it again. Uh, it'll be March uh, 23rd at Salvation Army again. Only the time changes, 5.30 p.m. And we're asking every and anyone that uh, want to come and be a part and have solutions and answers that they may want to introduce, they are welcome to come. The mothers are trying to uh, get change, you know, in our and want to in south, on the south side. And I'm working with them, and it's promising and it's exciting at the same time to see people come together on one uh, one focus and one voice. So if you want to come, you're welcome to come. It is snap, stop needless acts of violence, please. Thank you very much for that uh, and your involvement there, Shelley. I, I give the date again. Uh, March 23rd. 5:30. 5:30. March 23rd. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anyone else? Mayor, I would like to thank Julia and her team because Katie Uzar and I had a fantastic time at the Father Daughter Dance. How many people were in attendance? Oh my Julia? Goodness, it was our largest uh, event, our largest Father Daughter Dance ever. So I think we probably exceeded, we get close to over a thousand. Yeah, that's amazing. No, it was our first one. We counted down for about two weeks, counting the days. And, uh, now we're counting down to go to Colorado. So. Well, thank you. I'm glad you We're uh, very excited. We're very excited. Thank you. thank you. Okay, anyone else? Seth. Just want to uh, note uh, in the study session, we talked about our audit, and that's you know really the most exciting thing you've ever heard in your life. But. Uh, but it is because uh, they took a you know an audit, an extensive audit, 
and, uh, and the word that, that we got was uh, was uh, very good. And uh, so uh, the, the financial condition of this, the city is good, but what this is what this says is that the way we track it, the way we do it, meets all the standards. And uh, and then they had one one uh, thing that they they want us to uh, want us to include, and uh, it was a very good audit. So. Okay, thank you. Uh, before we leave communications, uh, Mr. Uh, Councilman Lanzotti. Uh, I have been uh, handed a note here. Thank you for that. Apparently, have a little intel. There might be a young man in the audience that might be a Boy Scout. Is that right? Is there, uh, would you come forward? Would you mind coming up? Can you tell the council your name, son? I am Zach Cook of Troop 8. All right. I'm the senior patrol leader. Senior patrol leader. Very good. So you, how long have you been involved in scouts? Um, not including the Cub Scouts. I've been in it from fifth grade. And now I'm in high school. Wow. Very good. Congratulations. Congratulations. And so as a troop leader, is that what you said? Yes. Uh, tell me, how does one become a troop leader? Uh, you go to a special training camp called NYLT, National Youth Leaders Training. And you go there, you meet new people that you've never met before. If your friends go, they get separated from you so you make new friends. <laughs> and you get paired up in a group with a, your own troop, a new troop, and you are given these tasks you have to do, uh, and you have to know how to make your guests lunch, dinner, and breakfast, but the tasks require uh, teamwork, leadership, and cooperation with the people that you uh, work, that are in your troop and your so you, work, you learn how to work together and learn how to ultimately become a leader in your, uh, in your group of peers there, and now you're a leader amongst your peers in your troop, is that yes. correct? That kind of looks good. It kind of works the same way when you get to adulthood, doesn't it? It does. <laughs> I think that maybe we might have a chair sitting up here for you one of these days when you grow up, get a little bit older. So uh, we certainly appreciate how, how much dedication you've given to that. Are you working towards a final goal? Uh, my eagle. Are you? Eagle. Fantastic. Well, we're proud of you to know that we'll be behind you 100%. Can you tell me who you're here with tonight? Uh, I'm here with my grandpa. Grandpa? Any grandpa's name? Rob. Rob Cook. His uh, his father is also an eagle. Well, he he is generally eagle. good stock. And they say eagles are like 2% yes. of their yep. start. Yep. That's fantastic. Well, he's well, got about six months left. He should have his. Fantastic. Great. Well, tell your... Not tell not only your grandpa because we're going to get a chance to tell him thank you for supporting this young man and making him a better member of the community through all your efforts. Uh, I'll tell your mom and dad that as well. We're we're certainly proud of you. We're we're thankful that you're here. Are you working on a particular badge? Uh, not yet. Or are you just coming to hang out with the city council because we're so much fun? Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> Perfect answer, son. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming up. Thanks for being here. All right. We have no public hearings this evening. Anyone here to appear before the council on any item that is on the agenda? Yes, ma'am. My name is Sharon Hill. Can you come forward, please? Yes, sir. We caught that. Sharon Hill? Yes, sir. Okay, welcome. Thank you. My name is Sherry Hill and I'm here on behalf of the police department. And I think it should not be moved. There's enough crime in the city without it going away from us now. The rape, the killings, and the apartments building right around <coughs> this area that you are not able to contain. Let's know the break-ins, the stores, and all of this next to schools, what about the hospital? Even the abuse and the beating, I think that we should keep it right here where it is and make it better because we need you all. You're all we got. And if we can't pattern ourselves after who brought us up, 
then what will we do? Who will lead us? Who will guide us? When all we know is you, all we ever had to, correct, to follow is you. Instead of teaching kids how to plant a seed, because foreign food make us sick, you just drop it. Okay, they don't even know how to till the land. <coughs> so after you all go, who's going to feed us? Who's going to help us feed ourselves? Who's going to do recycling? Who, can you tell me that Iran? Can you tell me that China? Can you tell me anybody else? It's going to help us to survive. No, they're not able. They don't know our technology. And the one that knows us best is you all. So if you will be held accountable for that. I believe that you believe in the Most High like I do. And it's up to you to lead us and guide us right. And you've been doing a good job. And I don't ever want to see you quit. <laughs> okay, very good. What's your address? My address is 1458 <coughs> Independence. Okay. I'm here on behalf of Karen Harvey. She's in the hospital and she could not be here. Okay. Very good. Thank, Thank you for your words. You're welcome. Thank you for being here. Yeah. Anyone else? Okay, uh, Eric, will you take us through the lengthy percentage?
for transportation trust fund five projects, public sixteen dash forty two, where the solution authorized the city manager to execute first amendment to escrow agreement with minor properties LP in Montgomery Bank and Anchor Ball and Place in the city of Missouri. Number sixteen dash forty three, a resolution authorizing the city manager to execute an agreement with Community Caring Castle for emergency solutions grant funds from the Missouri Housing and Development Commission. Number sixteen dash forty four, a resolution authorizing the city manager to execute an agreement with the Salvation Army for emergency solutions grant funds from the Missouri Housing and Development Commission. Number sixteen dash forty five, a resolution authorizing the city manager to execute an agreement with Catholic Charities of Southern Missouri for emergency solutions grant funds from the Missouri Housing and Development Commission. Number sixteen dash forty six, a resolution authorizing the city manager to execute an agreement with the for Women for emergency solutions grant funds from the Missouri Housing and Development Commission. Number 16-47, a resolution approving the project for Southeast Hospital be financed by the Industrial Development Authority of the County of Cape Verde, Missouri. Number 16-49, a resolution authorizing and approving certain actions in connection with the proposed issuance of special obligation bonds. Council, you've heard the uh, consent agenda. Written total. Uh, do I have a motion for approval? Second. 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 Any discussion? Oh, I have a question to the city manager. I know you gave us one explanation, but are we approving contracts for all of these TTF projects depending on the when the money is available? Um, what we did was we, we put um, all the design contracts. We said who is interested in, in doing design for the city. And people submitted proposals, and the ones that we uh, felt were qualified, we said we'll go ahead and enter into a, what we call a task agreement with them. And so this approves all those agreements so that we have the tasks enforced. But you're right, we don't we don't do those until we have the money to uh, to pay for the design. And so then we will contract with them individually as we have individual designs. But it's only as we have money to do it. By project. By project. Why did we change our mind? <laughs> Well, we, we're not selecting. All we're, this is a pool of consultants we can select from. This isn't. This isn't matching them up to, to certain projects at this time. You could be pre-approved for a loan and never actually borrow any money. Any other questions? So in favor, aye. 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 Opposed. Um, I got the easy job tonight. Number Thirty-one new ordinance, bill number sixteen forty-eight, and chapter seventeen. By repealing section 17-157A9 relating to noise control in the city of Cape Girardeau, Missouri, first reading. So moved. So moved by Snyder. Second. And seconded by Missouri. Discussion? I might ask our city attorney to address the reason for this at this point. The uh, reason for this is there was a lawsuit that was uh, recently. Uh, uh, recently received an order from the United States District Court for the Eastern District of Missouri on February 29th that ruled this particular section of Section 17-157 to be unconstitutional and in accordance with that order and the preliminary and the uh, permanent injunction restraining our enforcement of it, this ordinance is in front of you this evening to repeal that subsection. Okay, any further discussion? Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? And we have an appointment to the Board of Adjustment, and as discussed at our uh, study session, they be a reappointment of Larry Caldwell, if I could have a motion. So moved. So moved by Bowen. Second. And second by Missouri. Any discussion? Vote in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? And uh, other business, we need a motion to uh, set a special city council meeting to declare the results of the April 5th, 2016 municipal election and for availability of council that has been determined that it would be Friday uh, the 8th of April at 4 p.m. here in council chambers. So moved. We'll move Second. Any discussion? Vote in favor aye. aye. Opposed? Uh, do we have any other uh, business coming for us? Move to adjourn. To adjourn by Lanzati. Aye. Seconded by uh, Snyder. Vote in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? 